What are we buying next after we sell this, Steve? What's what's going to be the? We're obviously going to do another car. We're not going to we're not going to do one that was as bad as this, um, damage wise. But what 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 car should we resurrect? I don't know what car, but I think it should have ten or more cylinders in any configuration: V, flat, W, or something electric. Welcome back to BZ Builds. Thanks for sticking along with us and following our journey here as I just burn money on this Aston Martin. Uh, today we're going to figure out the fuel issue of why the injectors are overfilling the system or why it's getting the wrong signal. That's Steve's complicated stuff. Uh, we had planned on more carbon fiber, of course, from the ECPS group. However, they're still stuck in customs, so that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, we'll just take care of some really tedious stuff today that we've been avoiding and see how it goes from there. Because where is that, uh, the current wire is on that box it's um i'm curious to know what goes there like we don't have any pictures from well there was nothing left so there was nothing left so we so we don't have anything of that okay okay well i'm gonna go ahead and make that swap over and if the wiring all checks out good then um well i guess we'll have to see what happens but what i'll at least do is i'm gonna What's up, what? What's up? Oh, no, 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 What What I'm gonna actually do is I'm probably gonna I'm gonna drive it. I'm gonna disconnect all the injectors and then I'm gonna move that wire over there so to test the cranking. And that makes sense. That's actually a pretty good find, sir. And we'll probably have really good, really good cranking from that, I'm pretty sure. You're gonna miss the first test drive because I'm driving it today, me and Steve. When Steve rewired this car, we didn't document this because it was before we were doing the YouTube thing. This whole section of the car was wiped out. The floor pan and everything, firewall, were all ripped out of it from a fire hydrant. The ECM was missing and the wiring harness was completely obliterated. Steve repaired every single individual wire in the wiring harness and plug. It was absolutely amazing and artwork. But some of the things didn't get routed quite properly just because we didn't have a guide to go off of. Antonio noticed last week what was incorrect. Um, which will also give Steve a guide to figure out what's wrong going on with the injectors and why it's dumping so much fuel. Antonio's not here today because he's working for Elon. He'd rather be making real money. I tried to tell him, like, just tell your boss you're an up-and-coming YouTube star. They didn't believe him, so he's not here. I'm going to move the uh, wire, the main power wire that feeds the uh, back of the alternator, feeds the uh, starter main power to this other power stud here. And then I'm gonna disconnect all the injectors so that the car won't actually uh, do anything. And I'm gonna test how well it cranks. If it cranks without the battery jump box up here, then we know we're getting really good current and, and voltage to the starter, which would suggest that that's a, the correct part, you know, the correct area to get all the battery juice from. <laughs> and now we want to crank the car without a jump box to see if uh, it will crank without a jump box, which Oof. would indicate that it's getting all the juice it needs. Before we crank it, should we put the new ignition switch in it? No, no, no. So where did the wire go that you had it attached to? Uh, we don't know, but it's fused power, so that saved our butts. Okay. Every time it blew the fuse, Is that was that was the same. Oh, was that why we were blowing the fuses that's when we were likely, cranking it? That's very likely why we were blowing the fuse, so it was actually saving our butts, which was kind of nice. Like that was a, I got to give kudos to Aston for that. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. That explains it. So in our earlier videos, when we were first trying to crank the engine over before we ever started it, every time we tried to crank it, we were blowing the fuse. We thought it was a ground issue. <coughs> Apparently it was the way we had the starter wire. Kind of put the key in and see if we get good solid cranking cadence. You need to lose about 40 pounds if I'm going to be driving this car. Perfect. All right, so obviously we, when we were going to crank it, it wouldn't give us a lot of power. But with it being what we're supposed to be, we can see that it cranked perfectly fine. There's no jump box on the, in the front, there's no jump box in the rear, so we're good to go. There, so that problem being solved is nice. That's one issue out of the way. We know that the switch had some issues. Got one of those, so we're good there. And so now what I actually want to do is find out what is going on with the uh, wiring harness and why we uh, have a fuel issue at all times. And I think with that being solved, we know the switch will solve the uh, intermittent issue with starting and the starting power is solved. As far as I'm concerned, we have a vehicle that's ready to drive. <laughs> yeah, outside of the alignment, but like, and ready to drive. Oh, oh yeah, you need one of those too. We have goggles. We both wear glasses. We'll, we'll be yeah, fine. We'll be fine. Okay, so this is the ignition switch. Um, this is where in the dashboard, you push, the, push the key in, it makes contact here and goes through. It said I wasn't supposed to take this label off until it was installed, but you know, but whatever. So this isn't just an ignition switch. This is actually a module that controls the uh, parameters for the shifting, the park, reverse, neutral drive for the gears. So when we were trying to back it up, I think not the last video, the one before, we were trying to get it out of the shop and it kept going into neutral and, and wouldn't drive. This is what was causing us the issues. $1,300 is the price on this. That's wholesale, not retail. Retail, this is almost $2,000, so. Very nice. Whew. Nice. I would like to point out that we are down to one shelf of used parts. Oh, we started out with about six of these racks with all the parts and shit strewn everywhere. And these are mostly, some stuff we're going to reuse, mostly obsolete parts here, but um, down to one rack, that's a big, big step. I can finally bring my chopper back out of the shed and bring it back in the shop without anybody complaining about not having any room. So also we're going to do a video, separate video on my, on my bike here shortly um, with the passing of Robbie Knievel. Um, I just wanted to exhibit the bike that I have. I, I actually own his custom uh, 1999 CMC chopper uh, that was built for him and owned by him. And I've got all the documentation and history on it. So I'll be getting that out of our dry box and bringing it in and cleaning it up. I feel bad, I've been neglecting it. But now with this down to one shelf, I have room. So we'll be, we'll be bringing that up soon. So now for some of the more boring stuff, but necessary. Boring stuff? Okay, I'll be in my office. So, my immediate thought is that, uh, there, that the computer is probably no good. Um, given the nature of having to wire this vehicle, we want to basically check to make sure that the wiring from the injector harness to each individual spot on the computer is wired correctly. So we're going to check that for uh, opens and shorts and if it's ability to carry current. Uh, semi, semi lengthy to kind of check real quick, but um, we'll see what we find. So let's, let's do the fun stuff.
takes care of all this boring stuff, and when I get bored, bad things happen. And I was just in the office on the dealer auction, and I made an offer on a non-running 1997 DB7 convertible. Why would I do that? That's a terrible idea, because sitting outside the back door, we have a 6.0 LS motor that would fit right in there. So, we'll see if I get it or not. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be getting into the ECU, and I wanna make sure that I have ran every test possible. I don't know how much the boss loves spending money. All right, let's get that one there. Let's see if we can get some light to light up. Yeah, you got pretty good light. And we'll just move to the other side. It seems like pretty easy access. All right. See where all the electrical tape is. That's where he repaired the harness. And also, those connectors that go on the end, Aston Martin wouldn't sell those. Those go to the PCM, the computer. But I found a company called Connector Experts, and for about $300 a piece, I was able to buy those connectors from them. Uh, they saved me a whole lot of money, because if I had had to buy a complete wiring harness for this car, it would have been, I don't know, probably would have been 20, 25 grand. So for Steve to be able to repair all of those wires, and he pinned each one of those connectors individually, which means he put the new ends on each individual wire, pinned them to go exactly where they go, in the exact right spot. It's, it's amazing. I can't. I can't give my guys enough credit for, for their abilities and their skills. I never would have been able to do this without them. No light. It's on now. Yep. Alrighty. Go ahead and take it off. Okay. Alright. Yep. Go ahead and take it off. Okay. So your injection harness is good. What does that tell you you need to check next? Uh, power to ground to the ECU. Meter will pick up a ground because meters are looking for anything. Like if there's one strand of wire that's touching, that's good enough to, to make it go green. But one strand of wire could not light this up. So that ground from the case ground looks good. I'm not 100% certain why a ground to the ECU would be supplied as a uh, relayed power. So I'm probably reading that wrong. If someone out there in internet land can school me on Aston Martin uh, Earth Power Grounds. I would appreciate it. So what I'm going to do is plug it back in, recheck these, uh, what I believe to be floating grounds, and uh, go from there. But that will essentially be the last step. Before condemning my replacement ECU that I paid an Aston Martin <laughs> technician to come out here and program on site. I blame Antonio. Uh, yep, that's what I was just doing. Don't stab yourself when you do that. Quick commercial break, boy. Put a band-aid on. <laughs> no OSHA on Saturday, right. You know, like I said, I kind of had a feeling in my mind that something was wrong with the computer because each injector, like a computer, has all of these different chips on it. And each one of those chips, MOSFETs, capacitors, they all do something very unique. So you're, you're believing it's PCM at this point? I think so, yes. Okay, there's what I would like to do. I, I accept your answer, but what I would like to do is uh, we know the ignition switch is bad anyways. Mm -hmm. We know it's a major component in the system. Oh, yeah. So I would like to go ahead and change that and then just quickly recheck the issue to see if it still exists, which it probably won't, but we have to do that so we know it's bad anyway. Oh yeah, that, that's a must, that's a good, that's gotta go. And just testing this thing on, I had to push the switch like five or six times, then eventually the switch actually stayed back and the key came out. Yeah. So it's it's been, you know, it's been through a hard life. Yes. And the box of parts that's stuck in customs is the proper mirror for the power. Right. Once we get that, we can get that door all put together. That's not supposed to happen. And that probably explains part of our problem right there. Uh, see this here? Hats leak. 
So, Pat's is Ford, uh, Aston Martin's passive, like, anti-theft system. And so, this switch may need to be programmed. The vast majority of them do. Um, I'm not saying that this one does. It's old enough that there's a chance that it may not need it, but a large portion of them tend to need it. Anticipated seeing, but did not want to see. Uh, thankfully, we got yam for that. So I'm thinking that today is probably done. But the boss will be here, so he'll be able to see at least if the switch works great. Where the grounds go are, are as a plug that was damaged, right? Um, do you yeah. do you want to open it up? and just see if you can see something broken internally that we can just solder, or are you pretty confident we just need to send it out and have him do it? I don't mind opening it up. Um, we may need, uh, you just gotta look at it and see what it takes. Some of them are kind of funky, like the way that their uh, backs are glued on, but okay. we got a little. I, th I think it's worth a shot. Yeah. Really. And thank you for putting that switch in. That's good. This, this build has, had parts and services from all over the world and the country. Um, I don't think any one single part or item that we needed was sourced locally. Uh, eBay body parts came from a dozen different states. Uh, I've had parts from Britain, I've had parts from Italy. Uh, this is, <laughs> what did we ever do before the internet? I don't think before the internet it would have been possible to do a car like this. Yeah, as soon as it uh, unplugged or started taking pieces off, something just like just fell off of it immediately. So, um... well, it was full of glass when we got it. Vincent actually told us when he came out and programmed the PCM that we would need one of these because he didn't think we could get all the glass out of it. And I think he's right. So that company in New Jersey, the guy that's going to do the ECM for us, he's done other stuff, other ECMs for us, and I'm pretty sure that the level of skill he has is only capable by voodoo and witchcraft. Uh, it's, it's amazing what that guy can do and it will save us, although this sucks, I'm going to have to send the computer out, it'll cost us a couple few hundred bucks instead of like two or three thousand for a new one plus programming because he can either repair the ECU or copy all of our data including the key signature and put it over to another used unit. So that's, you know, not the end of the world, it's just frustrating. Another Another setback, I was really, really hoping to at least test drive this today, um, around the parking lot, at least. But, you know, I guess, uh, I guess we'll just have to wait another week or two. What are we buying next after we sell this, Steve? What's, what's gonna be the, we're obviously gonna do another car. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do one that was as bad as this, um, damage-wise. But what, what, what car should we resurrect? I don't know a car, but I think it should have it should either be 10 or more cylinders in any configuration, V, flat, W, or something electric. Let's see. 78 Jaguar XJ V12. There we go. No, God no. I had one of those. And it was before I knew a lot about cars. I was much, much younger. And the thing would never start right. And every time I would take it to the specialty Euro place to work on it, they would just add a ground. That was the answer to everything, was at a ground. There you go. And when I started it, it sounded like a helicopter starter. The one time, the one time that the car started right and, and ran amazing, it burned to the ground. Yes. I was hosting karaoke, I was leaving the bar at 2 a.m. And I got like two miles from the bar and the thing was just on fire. It was crazy, I pulled over. Somebody called, this is before everybody had a cell phone. <coughs> Somebody called 911. And uh, by the time they got there, it was not a lot done. 
I have no desire to repeat that. Well, maybe the Jags didn't make the most reliable 12 cylinder, but uh, there's, there's some good ones out there, though. Maybe if we could get a good deal on a, a mildly damaged R8. R8, Viper. There's, a, there's so many choices. I think a Viper would be nice, to be honest. Yeah. I, actually, I tried to buy one um, a few months back. It was damaged. It was on the dealer auction on the Buy It Now, and it salvaged, and it was near my dad in Oklahoma. And I I wanted to tell my wife about it, but I had already bought this, and I bought the Panamera, and then I bought the SL. Oh, and she, I didn't buy it. I was like, man, I better go out to dinner and have some drinks before I tell her about this one. And it, it was on a Buy It Now for like 12 grand or something. And it was a copperhead. And we were out to dinner, and on the way back home, and I told her about it. She's like, why don't you this earlier? Yes, buy that car. And um, I got home, I pulled up my app, and it was sold. Man, I know my wife's hella cool. I should've just asked her earlier in the night. Well, well, had a conversation with her earlier in the night. I don't need to ask. Uh, um, That's a lie. I totally always ask my wife. Mercedes makes a lot of V12s. Ooh, Mercedes does. Do they do an SL that's a V12? Yep. yep. Oh, man. SL 600, SL 65, terrain turbo, M275. Yes. The rewalk wide body kit on no. an SL 65. No. no. Maybe like exhaust pipes on the side, like a Viper, but. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. No. No seats, one seat, roll cage. Oh, yeah. So now we're talking. Oh, we can put an electric motor in the Super. I am still going to crush that car. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Jake to get uh, some of their excavation to put it back next door, and we are going to crush that Supra in the video. I'm not kidding. So if anybody wants to save the Supra that tried to burn Steve's face off, uh, let me know, because I'll make you a hell of a deal on it. I wonder what Antonio would say. Antonio would say, like, a, a Yugo or something. He would. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should turn it into a Yugo. With, like, a Geo Metro engine. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Actually, he'd be like, "All right, guys, an electric engine is gonna fall out of the the fall away from the parts department. We'll be sitting outside the back door. Come get it." Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I were to do an electric car, I think probably what I would want to do would I would want to find a, a replica Porsche Speedster convertible, like an abandoned project that somebody didn't finish. And then convert that to electric. That, I think that would be pretty stylish in a way to do a retro, but it would be economical because you get you know the kit car platform. Like the that black MGD TD I did. That would have been great for uh, electric something. Like I can still buy that back. The guy has never driven the car. So a few years back, I was at uh, Whitey's public auction, and there used to be another dealer named Ivan that would go down there, and he would goat me into buying shit that I shouldn't buy. And this kit car came up. It was an MGB TD, and it was tan and brown, and it had a big Keystone Cops Model A type windshield on it. <coughs> it had this, like 15-inch wheels with wire hubcaps, and he said nobody can ever make one of these cool. And I was like, well, hold my beer, and I bought it. And we brought it back here. And, uh, painted it black, had uh, small, two small uh, Brooklyn windscreens on it. We put uh, Vita lowering springs on it, of course it was just a Beetle, and Vita black wheels and painted it black, and it was badass. And I sold it to a guy um, who's never driven it. Towed it home and parked in his garage, and he calls me up about every six months and says, you want to buy this thing back? And I ne he never calls when I have money. So he always calls when I'm broke and paying taxes and shit. So the only thing I can really think of is Something with a lot of cylinders that just kind of screams excess and the technology of whatever period it comes from, or something that's just forward thinking off of like a retro platform, just because it's a pretty nice car. What about that? Oh, yeah. Like with a W12? The, the W12? Those are, we can actually, those are, uh, at least to buy one that's mildly damaged uh, is doable for me once we sell this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think because it's basically an Audi and VW. V12, it shouldn't be too terrible to, to oh, it repair. Is. It is. It is. It is. But that's, so that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that would be nice. Right. Well, they make uh, cup cars out of those back in the day. They Bentley had a, a uh, I don't know the correct term for it, but like <coughs> GT racing, they were based off of the Continentals and they were 
really good. But I mean, those are like all disco race cars, but it shares the same kind of body structure. It looks really nice. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's our plan. Bentley. Or Viper. Or Viper. Or Viper. Yeah. 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 And then. Uh, then I'll have drinks and then you can encourage me to buy whatever car we see on there. That's probably the best way to do it. Heck yeah. And then I can be like, Melissa, well, Steve made me do it. We can't do the door because we don't have the mirror. Yeah. Can't do these because they're sitting in customs with the mirror. Um, That's really nice. That's oh, that slam. Oh my God. ECPS group. They're amazing. Go to their website, check them out on Facebook. They are, they are incredible. Uh, we've got from them, we've got the front chin spoiler, the grill, the slam panel, the mirror caps, and the rear diffuser down low. Um, that's just, their shit's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. We're pretty much stuck. Like, share, subscribe, and donate. Did I see that? I'm trying to do the Antonio, it's not working. Let me just do it by way. Like, share, subscribe, and donate. As dry as possible. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, sorry we didn't accomplish more today, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. Have a great weekend. We will see you next week.